Hey everyone, Rayo here and welcome back to Reckless Ranger. If you're new to this series, Reckless Ranger is about getting best in slot range gear, becoming as best as we possibly can with the ranged combat style, and improving with PRs on all available bosses. If you'd like to catch the beginning of the series, you can catch the playlist in the video description along with the melee version of the series. I also stream a lot of my progress over on Twitch and have a Discord where I post all of my new video links and announce whenever I go live, so make sure to check out those links as well. But without further ado, let's get into the video. In today's episode, we're going to be figuring out if it's worth it to upgrade from the Noxious Bow to the SGB. I know for me, it's going to be an upgrade that I will stay with because it's just a pure DPS boost. But for quite a few players, I imagine that the price point difference is going to be a deciding factor on whether or not it is worth it. So as I always do, I'm going to take this upgrade to previous bosses that I've done on this series to kind of give a little bit of a benchmark. That way you can see the difference between a Noxious Bow and a Saren God Bow. This is going to hurt a little bit, but I've thought quite a bit about this and I'm just going to disassemble my Noxious Longbow because although I could use the money, honestly, the Noxious components are going to come in great handy in the future, especially when I get to do, um, like when I go to Gear Mage later on down the line, it'll be handy. And there's a few other perks that I would like. For instance, on my Masterwork gear, I have Biting 4 Dragon Slayer and Genocidal. I also just have regular Biting 4 on my Havoc vestments. So I want to get a few different sets of Biting 4 for all different styles. Very expensive, but I'm thinking like way, way, way down the line. Right now, I just have Biting 4 Dragon Slayer. And since I've been doing a lot of care pack with range, I want to get a genocidal perk. Uh, or I want to get a Biting 4 Genocidal. That way, it'll help me just a little bit more whenever I have the care pack Slayer tasks or the Nodon Dragon King Slayer tasks. But let's go ahead and augment this Saren God Bow. Oh man, I'm so excited for this. If you <laughs> caught, caught the previous episode, um, you'll know that I was saying I was going to get an ECB EOF. I was, I've been saying that for a few episodes, but honestly, I've been thinking a lot about this. With how much I've been farming Karapak, I really, really, really think that the Saren Godbow is going to suit me a lot better because of the way that I'm using range for Karapak. I'm using the poison build and the Saren Godbow is just a direct upgrade for that. And the ECB would not really have a lot of synergy with that build compared to the Saren God Bow. So I'm really excited to try this out at Care Pack. I'm pretty sure the special works pretty well there as well. Let's just see how this all goes with the next few bosses. First, we'll start off with Hellweir. I'm going to be going over the Noxious Longbow clip, and then I will follow up with the SGB clip. So just a little disclaimer that these aren't going to be the meta rotations. These are just the rotations that I did for the best kill time in my sessions. So I'll start off with a Greater Death Swiftness and Apot. And then I will build with basics with Greater Dazing Shot and Gricko. And then I'll instantly use Snapshot and Rapid Fire. When Rapid Fire has one second left, I will cue Snipe. Then I will Gricko and Deadshot. Now I need to build Adrenaline, so I'll Frag Shot, Greater Dazing Shot, Corruption Blast, Tendrils, Snipe, then Limitless with Snapshot and Rapid Fire. For the SGB clip, I start off the same exact way with Greater Death Swiftness, Apot, Target Cycle, and Vuln Bomb. And then I build Adrenaline with Greater Dazing Shot and Gricko. And then instantly use Snapshot and Rapid Fire. And then once again, as Rapid Fire is hitting the one on the timer, I will cue Snipe. After Snipe, I'm going to use Gricko for some more Adrenaline and Burst. And then I will use SGB Spec, Corruption Blast, Tendrils. And then I use Snipe again for the flank. And then I Debo and Gricko to finish off the kill. Two things that may not be immediately noticeable, but are pretty helpful to know are one, I am pre-casting Death Swiftness. That way, as soon as the boss timer starts, I can target cycle and Vuln Bomb in the same tick as well as Q a basic. This is really important whenever you're going for PRs because it essentially lets you do damage on the first available tick of the boss fight. The next thing that I'm doing is when I'm saying that I'm flanking with Snipe, the Nightmare Gauntlets upgrade has a passive that when you use Snipe on a target that is not facing you, it'll fire a second shot that does 50% of the first hit's damage. So essentially, you are using Snipe one and a half times for a single use. For this next section with Raksha, I only want to do the full kill clip of the Saren God Bow because the Noxious Longbow clip we've seen pretty much in the past, either on stream or virtually the same PR in previous episodes. 
So what I'll do is I'll take a few key points and I'll go over them with the Noxious Longbow clip, but then I'll play the full entire kill with the Saren Godbow, which is a brand new PR. I want to start off by saying that the Noxious Longbow clip is a little bit more on the exceptional side compared to all my other runs. It's not my absolute best PR with the Noxious Longbow, but it is the closest I have in clip form. But something that I normally do with the Noxious Longbow is I get both special attacks in phase 1 and I get hit by the stun at about 620k health left. Here I phased right after the 4th auto attack right before the stun happened so that saves a few seconds. During phase 2 I was able to get a relentless proc on Deadshot which gave me enough adrenaline to use a Darkbow spec. This made it so I was able to phase by the 3rd auto right before the tail swipe. And that's also a mechanic I don't normally skip with the Noxious Longbow. After the pulls on Phase 3, I will always go into a Death Swiftness rotation, but with the Noxious Longbow, I've never been able to skip the stun mechanic. In this clip, you'll see that I get close. I get to about 240k health left, which doesn't seem like it's too far off, but you can see that it causes me to waste quite a bit of extra time running around the arena phasing Raksha. And then I phase into Phase 4 at about 2 minutes and 22 seconds. My phase 4 rotation is pretty standard. I basically just unload with dead shot right away and get some of my harder hitting thresholds out of the way. That way they can be off cooldown when I actually gather anima and go into a death swiftness rotation later. But speaking on the phase 4 death swiftness rotation, in this clip specifically, I wasn't able to get the death swiftness off before the first special attack mechanic because I got stunned from not standing close enough to the platform. This doesn't normally happen, but in this kill clip's case, it only took 2 seconds off of my PR. My previous PB was about a 350 and this clip is a 352. Moving into the SGB clip of Raksha, I decided to just camp full arrows where previously I was using splintering arrows and full arrows. Here I start off my rotation fairly similar, but after I use rapid fire, I will go right into an SGB rotation to benefit from the death swiftness and get as many hits of the SGB off as I can and to put it on cooldown. Here you'll notice that I'll phase into phase 2 right after the third auto. Technically halfway through the third auto, but as soon as it completes, he'll go into the rock vault. I essentially just roam around Disruption Shield as I normally would with the Noxious Longbow. And I do my best to flank with the Nightmare Gauntlets because of the enchantment that I have. You'll notice that I'm pretty much using SGB whenever I can in each phase. I'm able to essentially use it every single phase. And you can see I go into phase 3 right after the second auto. So here I just use a couple basics, SGB spec, a couple bleeds, and then I will do pulls. Now normally after the pulls I will focus on the minion because with previous attempts I've never really been able to phase before the stun mechanic. But here I just completely ignore the minion. I'll do a death swiftness rotation as usual. Rapid fire, build a little bit of adrenaline and then I will go into an SGB spec and I'm still completely ignoring the minion. So I'm able to phase into phase 4 here at about 2 minutes, which is 22 seconds faster than the Noxious Longbow clip. Here I'll essentially start off the same way with Deadshot. I'll use my hard hitting thresholds to put those on cooldown. But then I also use my SGB before I use Rapid Fire. It's a little bit more expensive to use, but it is a skill that does a lot of damage and I also want to make sure it's off cooldown. I'm also able to get to Raksha to about 250k before the shield, where previously it was about 286k. Here I just gather a little bit of anima, I don't go too crazy with it. 
I was fortunate enough to get a relentless proc so I could go into a debo spec. And you can see that the SGB spec just does so much damage, the debo spec does so much damage, all of your thresholds just pretty much max hit easily when you have that much anima in a death swiftness. And I complete the kill at 314.4, which is a major, major, major improvement. Some closing thoughts with Raksha is that with the Noxious Longbow, I got into the habit of using splintering arrows to build up greater dazing shot stacks, which is still very, very strong because it makes salt in the wound basically a tendrils without hurting you. And I'm essentially camping full arrows the whole entire time. It's just a little bit more micromanagement when it comes to building up puncture stacks. And I just didn't want to deal with that with the Saren Godbow clip. I imagine if I refine that to a T, then I would probably get better than a 314, but I just wasn't worried about it. If I'm to use any boss as an example of why you should make the jump from a Noxious Longbow to a Saren Godbow, Raksha would be that example. As I mentioned, 352 is one of my better times Whereas 314 is almost a fairly standard time with the Saren Godbow. That is a major improvement when you're talking about average kill times. I would say on average my Raksha kill time with the Noxious Longbow is closer to about 415. It's almost a minute longer. And my following Saren Godbow kills were probably closer to about 320, 325. But aside from the major kill time improvement, not only just a kill time improvement but the average kill time improvement, the ease of play was so much easier. Your ability to phase and skip mechanics in phases 1 through 3 are virtually guaranteed, whereas Noxious Longbow, as I mentioned earlier, I never skip the second special attack in phase 1. That was probably the second or third time I've ever done that. Phase 2, I skip it about 50% of the time, but phase 3, I've never skipped the stun. On top of that, Saren Godbow in phase 4 just absolutely shreds. Raksha will get hit by every single one of the Crystal Rain arrows, and with Anima and Death Swiftness, pretty much all of them can max hit. If all of them max hit, then that's about 50k damage in a single special attack. So if you're looking for a specific reason to upgrade from a Noxious Longbow to the Saren Godbow, Raksha is the answer. <laughs> so with Kara, same thing with Raksha. We've done Kara so many times recently that I've done my Poison build video, I've posted a new PR with it, and the posted PR is a 514, but if you saw my previous episode of Reckless Ranger, you will see the same clip that you are watching right now, and that is a 451. I don't have that clip saved anymore. So as it's already mentioned, it's virtually the same exact rotation as I've been doing in the previous videos, just a little bit more refined. I'm just going to do the same thing as I did with the Raksha clips and just voice over for the full Saren Godbow kill. Oh, dude, this is so sick. So, oh, I, unfortunately I wasn't recording, which is so lame, but I got a 452.8 first try with the bow. My previous PV is a 451 and I messed up so much. I stalled during care packs jump so much. So uh, that's, that's a pretty big improvement so far. But the cooler thing is that I got 1K KC, dude. So I got the transmog unlocked. For care pack so let's see what it looks like oh yeah bro that is so sick <laughs> oh dude i'm so amped for this oh, i'm a pog Kara gamer okay 448 that is um that's pretty big because <laughs> once again i messed up quite a bit especially i, I don't know I, I messed up on a few spots i feel like i could easily shave off another like 10 seconds at least so with Care Pack, I always make sure to start off with a Venge and try and remember to do this when I can. As he lands, I will do a Greater Death Swiftness in a pot, And then as soon as the timer comes up, I will Target Cycle and Volt Bomb. I'll start off my rotation with a Greater Dazing Shot in Gricko, Snapshot, Corruption Blast, and then I will get another Greater Dazing Shot, Stand Under, and Rapid Fire. As Rapid Fire finishes, I will Dead Shot, and then I'll go into a Saren Godbow. And then I will walk my Fragmentation Shot, get another Corruption Blast off, and then I'll get a Snipe, because Snipe can do 10k fairly easily. And then I pretty much just use Gricko and Greater Dazing Shot off cooldown until I can use my Thresholds again. I try and save my Thresholds for when Care Pack is mid-air, because he will take full damage, and when he lands is when I'll use things like my Bleeds and Gricko, because your Bleeds can still proc Poison from Cinderbanes, and they don't do a massive amount of damage up front. 
whereas Snipe and Snapshot can hit pretty hard. So you want to make sure that you're getting full damage from those. You'll notice here that I'm able to get Carapac to spawn Lightning at about 100k health, where normally with a Noxious Longbow, it's around 150-160k. My best is about 120-130. When I phase Carapac, I make sure to re and I'll do a Smoke Cloud. And as soon as Warp Time pops up, I will do Warp Time and Death Swiftness, Rico, Corruption Blast, and Greater Dazing Shot, Snapshot, and then the tick that Warp Time ends, I will use Rapid Fire and Stand Under Carapac. When Rapid Fire is finishing, I will complete the channel with a Saren Godbow and use a couple basics and essentially build up to use my Snapshot and Rapid Fire right away, followed up with a dead shot. And then by that time, Care Pack is jumping. So same deal as before, use your hard hitting abilities mid air and then use your bleeds and multi hit abilities while he's on the ground. In this clip, I kind of mess up and I take a little bit too much damage, but you'll notice that I'm able to phase him as he's coming out of his third jump. Whereas previous attempts, I will normally phase a couple of autos after his third jump. Phase three, I start off the same way. I re bomb. I start off with my warp time rotation. End it with a Saren Godbow spec. Build up with Bricko. Dead Shot, Greater Dazing Shot, Corruption Blast, Snapshot, and Rapid Fire. As he's landing, I will Gricko. And here in Phase 3, it's pretty flexible because your Poison is doing so much damage that pretty much all of your multi-hit abilities do a massive chunk of damage. You'll notice that I phase him on the second jump. So something that I do here now is whenever I spawn into Phase 4, I will click on the first clone, I will Greater Dazing Shot and Vuln Bomb, and then I will Warp Time, Death Swiftness, zone into the Southern clone, Vuln Bomb, Gricko, zone into the Western clone, Vuln Bomb, and Greater Dazing Shot, click on the Northern clone, Limitless, Snapshot, and Rapid Fire. And then after Warp Time ends, I will do a couple Bleeds, Gricko, and Snapshot back on the Northern clone. I will either Rapid Fire or dead shot on the western clone. When they both get within 10k health of each other, I'll swap to my strike bow, reflect, and resonance, and I will surge over to the final location. I will build up with basics to get some when icy chill stacks, and then I will warp time and death swiftness between care pack and the southern clone. Here I will do a couple basics, limitless, snapshot, and devo. And then when warp time ends, I will typically snapshot one last time if the clone is not already dead. Once the clone is dead, if I have any icy chill stacks, I will use a threshold to release and get the damage buff from the when arrows onto care pack. And then I will swap to my big arrows and just start unloading all of my multi hit abilities. The only difference here is that when I have enough adrenaline for a Saren Godbow spec, I will use it on care pack. I always try and make sure that I will Vuln Bomb on Care Pack, but in this clip I forgot. But you can see that here I was able to get a new PR of a 447. So I know that was a bit of an information overload section, but there's a lot of moving parts and I made a lot of improvements since my build video that I posted a couple weeks ago. The Saren Godbo has made quite a big dent in my average kill times over the Noxious Longbow. Despite my Noxious Longbow PR being a 451, my average kill time in reality with the Noxious Longbow was about a 515, 530, sometimes even six minutes. Whereas the Saren Godbow, in the single hour, the first hour that I was using it at Care Pack, I was regularly getting sub fives. My slowest kill time was about a 510. I would say quite a bit of the improvement actually has to come from refining my rotations, namely during P4. At the beginning of P4, I added a Greater Dazing Shot and a Vuln Bomb onto the first clone before I do the Warp Time Rotation of P4. This allows for an extra stack of Icy Chill, and it gets the first clone down a little bit farther, so it makes killing it a little bit easier. 
I also added in the strike bow, as well as the reflect and resonance, while I surge across to the final location. Sometimes I'll surge across before the final clones are dead because with reflect and your deflect magic curse, it'll be able to kill the clone if it's within a few K of dying anyway. That way you can save a little bit of time and get started on the last clone. Another thing that I've changed here since the build video is that I've brought Blood Reaver healing scrolls. Every use of the scroll will take 1000 health from the Blood Reaver and apply it to you, which is very, very helpful during phase four, especially during the first two clones. At the start of phase 4, the damage from the clones in care pack doesn't hit nearly as hard as it would towards the end of the phase because care pack nor the clones are really enraged too high, so the damage hits are about 6 to 800 per hit. And since you're ranging, the magic hits have a pretty decent chance to miss, so the 1000 health from the blood reaper scroll helps sustain a lot while you're getting those first two clones down. All that being said, I do believe I could get a better PR than what I showed in this video with this build but that will take a little bit more getting used to the Saren God Bow spec and seeing when it's best used inside of the rotation. And that's all I have for you today, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that you could see the potential difference between the Noxious Longbow and the Saren God Bow. And maybe to help you make a decision to see if it's worth the extra 1.5 to 1.6 bill for the upgrade, but we're not gonna talk about the price. Now, all jokes aside, it is a very strong upgrade. If you can afford it, 100% get it, but it's not before Gricko or uh, Chroming 4. Those are definitely bigger upgrades that you should get first, but the Saren Godbow is the next upgrade from the Noxious Longbow weapon-wise if you are using longbows. But anyways, I have said bows way too many times in the past 15 seconds. If you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like drop a comment down below letting me know what you thought and definitely let me know what you thought about the voiceovers for the kill clips that was quite a bit of extra work but i did enjoy it and it's nice to kind of analyze my own kill clips because it helps me improve and i'm sure it gives you guys something a little bit better to follow along with so you can kind of understand what's going on or at least what is going on in my head if you want to ask any questions or see any of this live, definitely make sure to follow me over on Twitch and join my Discord channel for more advice and just a good community to hang out with. Links to both of those things are in the video description along with the playlist links to this series as well as the melee version of this series. Anyways guys, that's all from me today. I'm Rayo and I'll see you next time. Take care.